the stadium on edge, whether you're wearing purple or orange. My hands are sweaty, I'm nervous. I, I, <laughs> I think I'm feeling it for the TCU fans right now. Weymouth rolls the 2-1 pitch. Pena fields, throws, and for the first time in TCU baseball history, the Horn Frogs are going to Omaha. Um, honestly, when we lost that, that Super Regional at UT, it was, I mean, for me, it was heartbreaking because um, we had those good veterans that it was almost like I felt bad for those guys. And like, you don't want it, you don't want it to end that way. We're kind of new to the whole Super Regional type deal and the atmosphere and playing down at, at, in Austin against the Longhorns. I mean, that's probably one of the worst atmospheres we played in all year. Yeah, it was great making our first Super Regional, hosting our first Regional, and, and beating a team like Oregon State to go. And, you know, like, it was like all the, all those great emotions that you had after the Regional win were like all even more of a letdown after that Super Regional loss. So it was, it was pretty tough. But I actually made the final out of the, of the Super Regional. So that kind of ate at me all off season, I guess you could say. And there's a part of me still today that kind of felt like I, we were out of the game, but making that last out, I kind of felt like I let down some of the older guys. And I think it was really a, a, a kickstart and a stepping stone that kind of led us to making it to Omaha and the success that the, the program still has today. You know, game three, we just weren't good enough on that day. And I'll never forget, uh, Jason Coach struck out to end the game. And uh, I really had the feeling that we will be back in this. We gained a lot from this. Even though we lost a lot from that team, I knew what we had coming in. I just felt like if we could get through the Major League Draft in the recruiting process, that we had a chance to be a, have a really good club the next year. And, and uh, there's probably a part of me that felt like we would be back in the same spot. Uh, yeah, we definitely had, had kind of that taste in our mouth that we wanted to get back to where we were. And it definitely pushed us. It definitely gave us that drive that we needed. And um, I think we realized that we had a chance to be the program that we always dreamed about being. We had it like, it, it was a lot closer than we thought. It was a lot closer than ever been. And, and really looking back at that two, 2009 team, we all felt like we were just missing one piece. And, and that's where uh, Matt Pert came in. The press conference, you know, you're trying to be gracious, which, you know, Coach Garrido always was really nice to me and, and our program is saying all the right things about them. And I remember somebody asked me, what do you got to do to get over the hump? I said, well, we got to get through this draft and recruiting. The draft was coming up. And I said, uh, you know, hey, if you're listening, Matt Perk, come to school. I mean, he came on his official visit and we got to, to hang out with him um, and host him. But at the same time, I think none of us thought he was going to be here. I'll never forget, I was sitting in bed, had the, all the lights on, my wife next to me watching, you know, just watching Sports Center or something. And at 11.01, my phone rings and it's Matt Perk. And I'm totally expecting him to say, Coach, just appreciate everything, like they all say. Uh, but I feel like this is the best thing for me. And it was Matt and uh, a little bit teared up because it was such a pressure thing for him. And um, he said, Coach, I just want to know if you have a roster spot for me. <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, we got one. Um, and so on the drive home, I really kind of had this peace come over me about my decision that was like, you know what, this is a place that I'm supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to go. You know, I, I, whatever's in, in place for me there, I'm going to go find out. Well, I mean, honestly, I think we would have given him a really hard time, um, but he, he backed it up. You know, like it was one of those things where, you know, first couple of days we're like, hey, straighten your hat out, you know, this and that. But he just, he took care of his business. He did everything. He, you know, was as advertised. I really liked, you know, how competitive he was on the mound. He, he kind of reminded me of myself, a, a little bit of that bulldog mentality. I mean, he would tell me before we even got to game day that, hey, this is the way it's going to be. And I just kind of watched, watched the way he did it and took, I mean, he, it was crazy. Like, he, 
He did everything the same thing every time because he knew that's what made him successful. So. Well, I think we're foolish to think that players today, even then, didn't know what they were playing for. And so we had put together such a great season. And at the time in the Mountain West Conference, when the, the what they call the RPI, so the, the rating, your power rating, a lot of that takes into account your schedule and your opponent's schedule and your opponent's opponent's schedule. And so in the Mountain West, uh, a school like Air Force, you have to win the games. We couldn't lose games like that. We didn't have the luxury of being in, in the Big 12 at the time and, and it not affecting our RPI. I just wanted these guys to visualize what could happen and how this could be, a, we could turn a negative into a positive. So I wrote a fake press release and it basically just said, you know, looking back, fan base, even the team thought, you know, what's gonna happen from here? What a low day. And look at what happened. The baseball team won 12 of the next 13 games, including, including sweeping their own home regional and winning the Super Regional on the road. I, I just left it on everybody's chair. And <laughs> I mean, I'm not Nostrad Nostradamus. I don't know where that came from. That is exactly what happened. I think there was a lot of us in the clubhouse were like, okay, we take care of business in the regional. We, a lot of us wanted another piece at, at, at UT. We knew we were going to have to go through, the, uh, through Texas again, through Austin, and it kind of just lit a fire under us because we knew we'd been there the year before, we're going to have to do it again, but this year we're better. Chances were they were going to try to make us play Texas again, just because they didn't want the thought of having both of us in the final eight. It was almost one of those things where it was, we had to beat them. It couldn't have been anybody else in the country. That was, we had to get past UT. There was never, it was never a moment where I was ever nervous when Matt Perk was pitching. Full count pitch, strike three, a fist pump from Matt Perk as he strikes out the side. Coach Maisie, with me, all year, all he did with me was, is he would just tell me about what other teams thought about me or what he thought they thought I couldn't do. And it was basically just kind of like a reverse psychology thing. He'd be like, look, man, they don't think you can win. They think that you're done. They think they're, we're gonna, they're gonna blow you out. And I go, oh, really? Let's go show them. He had that air around him, like no matter how big the moment was, he knew he was gonna go out there and do his, do his thing. He didn't let anything ever get to him. So he, I didn't really expect anything less. Called strike three. Lockwood K's keys looking and TCU takes game one of the Super Regional three to one. We lose 14 to one. So take them right into the locker room and you know, you give Every coach, for the most part, has given, you know, speech 138 uh, after the game. Hey, what's the score now that the game's over? It's zero to zero, right? We're still in the exact same scenario. We still have to win one game to get to the College World Series. So I'm talking, and right to my right, sitting on the arm of a chair, is Holiday. And I can see him. He's looking at me, and his toes tapping, and he just can't wait for me to shut up. And... I said, all right, let's get out of here. And he said, hold up, coach, I need to talk to the team and I need you guys to leave. So if you can picture this. I was like, all right, I love it, have at it. So I opened the door and there is the entire Texas baseball team and Garrido. And they're like, Slosh, what the heck, man? What are we doing? I said, I can't tell you, they, they're still meeting. I just kind of laid into the team and, and got really emotional, poured my heart out there and just, Explain to everybody like 
we came, we came this far, this is not happening, not on my watch. Everyone is behind us and it's time for us to show them that we've got what it takes and that we're no longer this small school that can maybe play a little good baseball here and there, that we're someone to deal with and we're going to show these guys on their own field and these fans that, it, that we came to play. And that was something that, you know, that we all kind of remember. It was much more colorful than that, um, but it was what we needed to get us refocused for the next day. Winkler was such a talented, such a talented pitcher, and he was able to just tap, tap into it when he needed to. And you know, when we got a guy in score position, he was able to execute his pitches and get those guys out. And yeah, it was a grind, and it was definitely taxing, but he did a tremendous job of battling and grinding through it, and and you know, li leaving it all out there. His two-two to Schultz, lifted in the air to left field, wall him back on it. It's a two-run bomb, and TCU leads 3-0. The Frogs trot a little bit closer to Omaha. Still one of my favorite moments. I mean, I mean, you can't say enough about Schultz. I mean, he was he went out there every single day and just grinded it out and not the most flashy, flashy guy, but was would make unbelievable plays in center field. And then when he comes up and hits that home run and still remember it, it was a bomb. And that just made us just go, everybody in the dugout was was uh, going crazy. And still, that's probably one of my top TCU moments too, is when he hit that home run. I knew we did it off chance, so it kind of gave everybody else we started rolling a little bit on him after that. So it pretty much just told us, hey, this guy's not unhittable. We can, we can go get him, so. Holiday is going through his routine because every at bat's important. And the fan yells uh, from the stands, hey, get in the box, you know? I think he may have said shut up too, but nobody was saying anything. Uh, he just said, get in the box. And I don't know whether Brian heard it or not, but on that pitch, he hit it to the moon. Herbie called timeout, the home plate umpire, so no pitch. I didn't hear that time. I remember I was doing I was doing my routine, you know, looking at my bat, tapping the plate. All I remember was the umpire yelling, time, time, time. And so I kind of stepped out and as I looked up, I felt like the ball was coming right in my face. So, you know, I was I was uh, pre pretty heated at the moment. And so I just like and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crush this pitch, no matter where it is. I know I'm gonna crush it. And sure enough, he throws me a fastball up and in, and I, t I turned on it, and I knew it was gone the second I hit it. Home runs in back-to-back -back innings by TCU. Holiday puts this one in the parking lot. It was, it was one of those uh, angry home runs where you, you kind of like act mad when you hit it, cause, and, and so that was, uh, yeah, I was definitely trying to make my presence known at that moment. Lockwood got that final out and chunked his glove about 20 rows deep into the into the stands. So I made the last out at first and obviously I put the ball in my back pocket because I didn't know where it was going to go, but I wanted to keep it. I didn't want to give it to the umpires. They probably would have kept it too. You know, the, the thing about the College World Series, and even, even still for the most part, is they just cheer good baseball. So there's not necessarily, it's not a incredibly tough atmosphere to play in because it's a pretty neutral atmosphere. So we get to Omaha, have our practice, and then we're having our, after you have your practice, on the practice day, you do an autograph signing. And I'm like, who's, we're TCU, like the first new kid on the block. And the line was around the stadium. That we hadn't been yet, so that was kind of one of the humps that, that you have to get over. But being here and, and actually making it was, it was worth everything that I'd done up to that point. I mean, it was better than I had even anticipated. I mean, it was like heaven. Yeah, so, you know, when it came to the time to set up the College World Series 2, it was kind of like, what, you know, how are we going to go about this? Because we knew that if we beat Florida State, more than likely we were going to play UCLA in the second game. and. I think the one thing that some I remember this. I don't know if everybody does, but in the press conference leading up to the game between with Coach Martin and Coach Slosh, he called us the Mustangs from SMU. He's talking about who who they're going to play, and he has a little slip up and says SMU instead of. I was like, No, Coach, we're, we're TCU. 
you, you can forget about us and think that we're some small school, but brother, when we get in between the lines, we're, we're beasts Outs and we can recorded. play some ball. Yes, sir, 5-1 TCU. The mentality was the game's not over till that the final out's made, and we knew, like I said earlier, that our team from top to bottom in our lineup was dangerous, so there was no lead that was safe by any means. So I think we just worried about what we could do and, and, and just take it one pitch at a time and just chip away at that lead. There was just no part part of me that was going to stop, and I guess like as I'm as I'm coming in, like I just like I, I was out by a mile, and I was I just I don't I don't know how I did this move, but I remember sliding into the base and then just pulling my arm away and doing a swim move and and just trying to avoid the tag in any way possible. where I recognize that it's a curveball right at when his hand comes up over over the top of his head and you can see me actually step and I pause there's a little pause there and in that pause I can remember thinking to myself gotcha I mean right when he hit it I knew that, that he Got it pretty good. I did not know he got it that good. I really don't even remember running the bases. Looking back at the video, I mean, I was running fast, and I usually don't run the bases that fast. Yeah, I mean, it got lost in the orbit, so I, you know, I kind of felt like I started levitating. I felt like I was kind of in the air for the entire time he was rounding the bases, and, you know, even when he got to home plate, he just got mauled. Because I was. I was running and I kind of, since we were all moving at the same time, I saw it off his bat, but really couldn't turn around to, to see it because I didn't want, I didn't want to miss second, second base. But then once I heard the stadium just going absolutely crazy, I knew, I mean, it was gone. thing is that that team was one of the, the funnest teams I've ever been on like we we went out there we were getting doing our doing our job but at the same time we were we were having a, a great time out there having fun I, I love I mean I, I moved to Fort Worth to be around this um, and it's just this I, I get such such a tremendous amount of pride about what what this has become you know I remember when we got padded walls for the first time in the outfield and to, to look at where we are now, to, to see what they've done with the stadium, what they've done with the facilities, and you know, it's one of the best programs in the country. That team did change TCU as well. It wasn't little old TCU anymore. And yes, we were still in the Mountain West, um, but we earned our way.